Welcome, welcome to another episode of Edible Rx. I'm Laura Rodriguez, holistic chef, autoimmune warrior, and backyard farmer, and this is the podcast that teaches you to use food as medicine. Today on the podcast, we're talking all about toxins, the role that toxins play in the onset and therefore the management of autoimmunity. And I'm having Margaret Romero, functional nurse practitioner from New York, join us today to talk all about it. We're talking toxins in our food, toxins in our body products, toxins in the air, you name it, we go over it. So let's get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Margaret. I'm so excited to have you here Speaking to our members of the Flare Free Cooking Academy, this is just like a dream come true. I've been following you on social media for a while, and you are a fellow autoimmune warrior and a nurse practitioner. I'd love for you to just go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about you, which condition you have, what kind of medicine you practice, and all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Thank you for having me, by the way. I'm I'm so excited to be part of this. So let's see. In um, 2007, I was diagnosed with lupus. And uh, that was um, a very, very hard time for me. Uh, And I was in the hospital and um, I had like head to toe, muscle pain, joint pain. It was just um, such a difficult time. And from there, I decided to kind of take medicine into my own hands somewhat after I noticed that my joints would get really swollen after I would eat. Right then and there, I became gluten-free. I was living in Boulder, Colorado at the time. It was not hard to be gluten-free there. And within a week of time for me, the, I noticed my joints started, the pain started going away. I just started to notice like even the swelling in my face. I, Every time I would eat, my cheeks and would get so red and so swollen. And so I noticed that there was none of that. So that's kind of where it all started. And then from there, it just evolved into doing more functional testing and me learning all about this because I was not into autoimmunity prior. And then um, resolving and reversing, you know, finding pathogens and stool testing, toxins, et cetera. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So before you said you weren't into autoimmunity before you were, were you, is it, um, if I'm remem- remembering correctly, were you like in the ER? Is that where you were doing your work? I was doing, yes. At the time I was doing, I mean, I'm trained emergency medicine at the time I was working at an urgent care. All right. Well, let's talk about toxins. The reason we're here today, you know, um, I think this is one of those things, like for me, I started by um, addressing my toxic burden and addressing my diet. Those were just two really easy ways and interesting things for me in the beginning. And then slowly but surely started addressing other things. And I think that, you know, it's really, what's the word? There's a lot of information about toxins and non-toxic products on the um on social media and stuff right now. So I think this is just a good place to start. So I want, I want to ask you, you know, like, let's just break it down. What are toxins? What do we mean when we say toxins? My gosh. Okay. So this it's toxins are like, they're everywhere right now. And environmentally, um, the air fresheners from the laundry detergent to the cosmetics, the lotions on our skin, it's, it's everywhere, you know, even um, the things that are being sprayed out in the environment, exhaust from cars, and we bring them into our home from when we walk outside, which is why please start removing your shoes at the door. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also, you know, women, we have so many, so many cosmetics and all these things that we put on our face and they're loaded with things that we don't really want on our skin, on our body. And so it's really important to be really cognizant of trying to choose products that are clean and to- some, you know, toxin-free, stop using, you know, like Febreze and even the Lysol sprays. I mean, these are all things that are, that have toxins within them. All of the, and I know this is going to go against um, so many this past, since 2020, but you know, you have the um, 
the hand cleansers after everything, people are just like, you know, cleaning their hands, making sure that, you know, they're not spreading any bacteria or anything. And so those are endocrine disruptors. They affect our hormones and slathering it all day and then having your kids doing the same thing is not, it's not good. Like it's just wash your hands with soap and water if possible. I get mm-hmm. it if you need it in, in, a, in a pinch, but making it a habit to do it all the time is really not good for you at all. And yeah. so when I talk about toxins, um, ex, you know, externally, all the environmental things, but also food can become a toxin. And for me, it was gluten at one point. And that could be the body became inflamed and it saw it as a toxin. And so food sensitivity testing is really important also. But then we have um, things like pathogens, which we can get into at a later date. But um, if we're talking strictly about toxins that come in our everyday, things that we use on a daily basis, cleaning products like Clorox is really bad for you. And I think people just use it to like whiten their whites and clean the toilets. Yeah. So we talked about, okay, so there's, there's toxins in the air, like pollutants in the air that we breathe in. There's toxins in our water, things that pollute the water system. You know, people, I'm sure there are still people right now doing it right now that dump things down the toilet that don't belong down the toilet, right? And that our water cleaning systems can't remove like prescription drugs or, you know, the bleach that you wash your floors with or whatever. Um, And then we have um, toxins in, in our body products, in our cleaning products, right? And then in our food. So those are some of the things. And now let's talk about like, how do we avoid those things? You had mentioned, you know, um, briefly, but I think let's, get some kind of like concrete tips on how to avoid um, our exposure to these toxins because there's certain things we can't avoid, right? Like we're walking outside, we can't avoid breathing in that air, right? We can do something about the air quality in our home. We can do something about the water quality in our home, but if we're Mm -hmm. at a restaurant, we're drinking tap water. So can you give us some concrete examples of things that we can do to try to avoid those toxic exposures? So I think think two things that people need to have in their home. Personally, um, if they can, if they can manage, you know, affordability, but there are so many payment plan options. Anyway, there's (laughs) the air we breathe. And so there's a couple of different companies that I trust for what there's so many water filters now. I mean, there's an insane number. So what water filter do you have now? I have the Berkey. Okay. Same. I do too, as well. I have the, it's called the big Berkey. Yes. I think it's got two and a half gallons. Yeah. And I love that. I love the Berkey too, because, um, it's like you, if you theoretically, if you needed to, you could take it anywhere. It doesn't need to be. Exactly. Um, you can disassemble it. Mm -hmm. And I have a diffuser that I use. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think that's probably the best. Yeah. Most non-toxic. Um, How do you feel about um, beeswax candles? I've heard, I don't know if it's true, that beeswax can clean the air. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I haven't heard that, but I like beeswax. Mm-hmm. And I believe that also soy candles are good. Okay. Okay. The ones from like, I'll tell you the worst ones. The worst <laughs> ones are, are like from um, Yankee Bath Candle, and, like Bath and Body Works, Yankee yes. Candle. Yes, yes. Um, because some of them actually, I mean, I, I don't know which ones have lead. Okay. You get the lead from it. And so you wow. just want all things to also be really clean. Yeah. Yeah. So you can think about also the wick that's burning inside the wax, I think is also, if it's a paraffin wick, it's a wick that's coated with paraffin wax, which is toxic. But if you get one that's coated in beeswax or something, then that would be a better option. Yes. <laughs> and also know that when you go get your nails done, they always want to put the paraffin with the gloves on your mm. hands. I don't know if you've ever had that done. Oh, like always say no to that. Paraffins <laughs> are, are not healthy. So because paraffin yeah. is made from oil, right? It's made from petrol. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So can we talk about really quickly um, why 
using something that has a fragrance in it, whether it be body products or household products or air fresheners is, is toxic. So a lot of them tend to have things like phthalates, which are all cancer causing, you know, they're carcinogens and we, you know, and there's so many things that have natural flavors. It's food and there's just so many things. And sometimes it's hard to avoid. So you really have to start reading ingredients, but it, it's because of the carcinogen ability that it has in it as well. And then you also, like, you don't even actually really know fully what's in there. When they say natural flavors, you don't really know what, what it could be gluten. It could be so many other things, so many additives. And then I've read that if, um, if, if like a product says fragrance, right. If it doesn't have like an essential oil, it has a fragrance oil, a fragrance could be made up of, you know, hundreds of thousands of different chemicals to make that fragrance. So you're now exposing yourself to just this kind of like compounded chemical toxin, right? Yes. And in the States versus like Europe, there are more toxins that are allowed here. So they're allowed into cosmetics and all of these like fragrance stuff and plugins than there would be in, in Europe, for example. So all of those companies are largely unregulated here. Right, for sure. So that brings me to my next question, because a lot of the products that we're talking about, they're not going to have a label. Like a candle is not going to say what it, what's in there. Um, your mascara isn't going to say what ingredients it has. You know, a lot of non-toxic companies will list the ingredients, but a conventional company is just going to tell you how to use it, not necessarily tell you what's in it. So how do we know which products are safe and which are not? Is there like a database, a website, somewhere we can go and put our like product in and search for it? Or what would you recommend? Okay, so great question. So EWG, environmentalworkinggroup.org, EWG.org is one place. But also a lot of cosmetics do, when, when, when it's in its package, it will have the ingredients on it. And so I will look at that. But I know like I don't, I stay away from like, CVS, Cover Girl and Greens, <laughs> L'Oreal. Like I don't even look at that stuff. I, I also look for wheat. I don't, I don't use any cosmetics that has wheat in it um, due to my gluten. Because that's a big thing. People with gluten sensitivity or gluten allergy, uh, gluten is found in a lot of uh, body products. Hmm. And shampoos. There's okay. a lot of wheat, um, even in like Aveda products that smell so good. And you would think like oh, natural, yeah. they do have wheat. And yeah. a lot of their um, shampoos. All and that oat, the oat stuff that they put probably is full of glyphosate and. Uh, <laughs> oh my and, gosh, so much. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So EWG, um, I'll, I'll list that link for people to go and check. I know you can also put, they have a database for water. You can put your zip code in and see what's in your water. You can do um, your body product. You can search for it if they have it, or just look at the list of ones that they recommend. And it'll give you like a rating for how clean or yes. dirty your product is. So that's a great place to start. Like look at what's in your, in your, this is how I started. Look at what you have. And if it, if you didn't buy it from the natural section of the store, you probably need to either phase it out or dump it and replace it. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can start learning because there is, I'll ask you this question. There's such a thing called greenwashing where companies make it seem like it's healthier for you, but it's really not. So how do we decipher between what's greenwashed and what's actually non-toxic? Yeah. So I think the biggest, one of the biggest places I also see that in is like pans, like cooking pans. Um, I think there's a company called, is it, I want to say Green Line mm -hmm. or is it green? It's green something. Do you know? Green what it is? pan, isn't it? Green pan. And, and it has ceramic. Yes. Coating on the inside. Coating. Yeah. Doesn't last long. The minute yes. you get a single little nick of scratch, it's junk because you get yeah. the toxins. Well, do you want me to go about talking about pants? So you want me to, I want to say one more thing about the makeup. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to say one thing is that you look at any eye, either liner or shadow. And if the word aluminum is in there, do not buy it. I mean, yeah. it's a toxic metal and it, it, it's in so much makeup. It's so crazy. Probably and what so makes it stick to your eye, right? I don't That's know why they put it in there. Why else would they put aluminum in there? It makes no sense. 
it makes no sense, but that is the worst toxin that you want near your brain is aluminum. Right. Right. So heavy metals can also be a toxin then as you're oh, saying. Heavy, yes. That's in the air. It's, um, you know, we were talking about the lead in the candles, aluminum, definitely in oh, so much makeup. You were talking about greenwashing in the pans. Did you want to go into cook cookware? Yeah, I just, you know, I, there's only two types of pans that I use. So I use that green one I used to, because I was like, oh, ceramic, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, but then the minute they got one little scratch, it was in the garbage and it didn't <laughs> last that long, like literally probably yeah. a month. Yeah. Or two. They're not cheap. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think you don't really need a nonstick. I just, I even feel like, I don't know. Um, it's just, if I, I feel like it cooks a little different. Do you feel that way? The nonstick, I, you know, I don't know. It's, we have nonstick for my daughter when she cooks because she's not going to stand there and wait 10 minutes for a, uh, for a pan to heat up. So we have a nonstick pan that we let her use, but, um, you know, it's not one of those things where you're going to use it to get a brown on anything. You're not supposed to cook high heat with nonstick, you know, nonstick is supposed to be medium heat. So it's kind of along the same lines as that, that, um, ceramic pan that I just bought. It's not my favorite type of pan to use. So in it, let's go, let's go back more on household air. Cause right. They say, um, that your, the air that you breathe in your house is one of the worst quality airs you can have, right. From fumes from cooking and the air fresheners that you talked about, plug in air fresheners, um, candles, all of those things can contribute mm. to just toxins in the air. So do you have any suggestions for what people would like should use instead if they want their house to smell good? So I use essential oils. Yeah. Yeah. One of the companies that I think really drives me crazy and I'm going to look it up is the, the hand, the Myers, the Myers hand soap, the uh. Myers dish soap, all of that stuff is so heavily fragranced with, in my opinion, like toxic, you know, fragrances that it's like, and everybody buys that thinking that it's healthy. Yes. And I also heard something about seventh generation too. Have you? I have not. I use their, um, I use their unscented uh, dish soap for the kitchen. I hope it's not bad. <laughs> when I first started my healing journey, I just went like gung ho. I just ripped everything out. I bought like beeswax, shea butter, coconut oil. I bought all the things and I used to make my own body products because so I cool. find that instead of like, instead of like having to go to all these separate websites, a lot of these things you can make at home with stuff that you already yeah. have. Like, yeah. so that's another way that you can do it. If you, if you're on a budget or you don't have time and energy to look up all these things. Um, I know we're going to talk about detoxing later, but you know, I just want to quickly say, is it enough to just avoid toxins or do we have to do something to actively remove the ones that are already built up in our body in order to notice a difference in our health? I feel like it's really important to be like mildly detoxing all the time. Like, I mean, I do, um, because this stuff builds up. I mean, sure. I have a Berkey and an air filter, but we also get produce from the pharmacy. I mean, from the grocery store and they could be organic, but there's still residue, you know, there's mm -hmm. still things in, in, in foods and whatnot even just, I mean, going outside, there's it, things are everywhere. So I do a very, are we are going to be talking about, um, de, we're going to be talking about detox because yes, I do believe will. that there is some DIY things that people can do like, mm -hmm. um, you know, Epsom salt baths is great infrared sauna time. Mm -hmm. and so I think those are really important. I, I do them often. Absolutely. So do you offer any like functional medical testing at your practice? Cause I know you have a little private practice that you do virtually for telehealth for folks. Is that right? I do virtual. Yes. Okay. So I have a functional medicine practice and I work primarily with women with either autoimmune conditions, thyroid issues, um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And I do all the functional testing, um, blood work, et cetera. Yeah. Do you have, okay, so you do have testing specifically for like, you know, like we talked about heavy metals or do you do glyphosate testing or anything else like specifically related to that toxic? Yes, um, there's, there's definitely, it also de depends on if the person has um, where they used to work, if they used to work, sure. or if this is okay. where there were toxic substances. So there yeah. are like 
petrol and all of these okay. tests that can be done. I don't necessarily do them on everyone because sure. a lot of us haven't come in contact except for like putting gas in our car. Yeah. Um, but if you're like a mechanic or something, you might, you know, totally. That. Yeah. Totally. Yes. Very cool. So if you want to tell us anything else about your practice or any specials you have going on or, you know, just services that you offer, I know you have an online course that's really wonderful. You have a podcast. Go ahead and just tell us a little bit more about how folks can find you and follow you and what else they can get from you. (laughs) So I'm on Instagram every single day and I love, that's my favorite platform. So that's where I'm at, at Margaret Romero. I do have a podcast called the Sacred Medicine Podcast. And I have lots of autoimmune topics there, functional medicine topics. And I think that I haven't actually, it's on a hiatus right now, but sure. I have over like 230 episodes on there. I do have so a completely I, bingeable. <laughs> <laughs> I have a book called um, From Flair to Fabulous 25 Things You Should Not Do to Avoid Your Next Lupus Flare. Let's go. Amazon. Hmm? <laughs> I said, let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> and flare um, to flare to, to fabulous. I love that. Awesome. I did not know that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's on Kindle too. And it tells about my story. It goes a lot deeper into my story and like 25 things you should do and not do. Um, Is so- toxins on there? <laughs> yes. Yes, for sure. Yay. For sure. Okay, cool. And I have two, two programs, um, that I offer now for women. They want to work with me and I'm also going to be coming out with membership soon in the next, um, probably six to eight weeks. Awesome. About that. Yeah. Yay. So lots yeah. of things going on, lots of ways to get involved. I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I thank you so much for being here today. It was so wonderful talking thank to you. So you. I always love to see your beautiful face. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for having me. I love sharing this stuff. Um, I share so much more on Instagram. Yes. And, um, I love being part of this community. So thank you so much for having me. Yes, everybody go follow her on Instagram. She posts every day. I do. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Edible RX. I hope you love this episode as much as I did. If you did, please leave us a review or a rating. You can share this with the Anami Warriors or the health warriors in your life. That would be super helpful. Um, And please check out Margaret online on Instagram at Margaret Romero. I've dropped the link in the show notes. So definitely check that out. Follow her online, um, check out her book, all the things. And thank you guys again so much for tuning in. I'm Laura Rodriguez, holistic chef, autoimmune warrior and backyard farmer. And this is Edible RX signing off for this week, guys. Until next time. Eat your damn vegetables. Bye.